This mix was sent in by Jeff. I mean, right off the bat, the tones aren't terrible, but the balance is way off. Like, the bass is, like, the loudest thing in the whole mix. Uh, nobody but a bassist wants the bass to be the loudest thing in the whole mix. Uh, bass is too loud, guitar is too loud, and then the drums are too quiet, and the vocals are way too quiet. We can barely hear the vocals here, so those have to come up a lot. You Honestly, man, this sounds like a demo more than anything. Like, it doesn't sound polished at all. It doesn't sound like you did any processing on anything, except there might be some compression on the drums. But other than that, like, it doesn't really sound like you EQ'd much, if anything at all. It sounds like you mostly just, like, had a rough recording and then did a balance of the faders. And even the balance of the faders was off, because, like I said, the vocals are way too far in the background. The drums are a little too quiet. And then the bass and the guitar are definitely too loud. So, like... I mean, start getting the balance better is the first thing. And then, you know, start actually processing like some EQ, some compression, clean things up, make it sound a little bit more polished than it does. Because right now it just sounds like a demo. Sorry if I mispronounced this. This mix was sent in by Neelis. Honestly, man, this sounds pretty good. Uh, the snare is maybe a little too over the top for me. Uh, you could probably clean up some mud in the time effects. Like, hopefully you have all your reverbs and delays on auxes instead of right on the tracks. So then you can just EQ a little bit of low mids out of all those time effects, clean it up a little bit. But overall, like, sonically, this sounds fine. Uh, I'm pretty sure you said that this is going to have vocals on it eventually, or you took them out for whatever reason. But, like, it's not really progressing a lot. It's kind of boring. I would imagine that if it did have vocals, it would be a little more entertaining than it is. But overall, sonically, it sounds pretty good. Honestly, if anything, I would say I could use a little bit more of that low end synth. Like it's not like super, super bassy. It's not as low as the kick is here, but like there's a low end synth in there. I would bring that up a little bit. Uh, like I said, I, I think you need to clean up some mud in the time effects. So once you do that, I think you can bring that low end synth up a little bit and it'll fill out the low mids in a way that doesn't sound as muddy as all those washy time effects moving around. So. Yeah, really, honestly, those are my main points there is cut some mud out of the time effects and then bring that low end synth up to kind of fill in the gap in the low mids that that's going to create. And that'll make it just sound overall a little bit fuller and a little bit tighter than it does right now. This mix was sent in by Pert Willoughby. Dub, as it seems, has been involved in a Clermontoise breakbeat hardcore experiment. All right, those glitches right in the beginning were really, really harsh. Just like take a little bit of the 3K out of those, just like a tiny bit. I get the effect you're going for, but those, those hurt. Okay, uh, I liked the drum sound in the intro there. It was cool. It felt intentionally thinned out. When this bass synth comes in, I would have opened it back up. I would have had it be a much 
fuller drum sound. That kind of a drum sound is cool for effects in like, you know, certain sections of the song, but I wouldn't, I would never have a full song with that kind of a drum sound. And now we're back to the painful glitches. Uh, they're even worse on the left side than the right. Uh, honestly, that might just be me today. My right ear is feeling a little clogged, but like it felt significantly more high-end harshness on the left side than the right side. So you might just need to take it out of the left side a little bit more. At the very least, even if you want to keep those painful frequencies there, it doesn't feel balanced left to right. So balance that out a little bit. But overall, those feel really harsh and painful, and I'm not a fan. So I just reversed the pan of the left and right to double check that it wasn't just my ears. It was not. The left side of this track is definitely a lot harsher because when I panned it to the right instead, it was a lot harsher on the right than it was on the left. So at the very least, please balance that out, but I'm not a fan of the harshness. Like, you can do that kind of a glitchy effect without it being that painful. This mix was sent in by Nathan. <laughs> Okay, dude, you asked about the mix and the arrangement of the song. They could use some work, but the main problem here is the performance. Like, dude, that is so sloppy. Even the, like, single kick hits from the drums is, like, not in time in the intro. And then when everything really kicks in, like, holy fuck, like, nothing is playing together. It's all, like, the drum, it really feels like everyone recorded their own parts on their own without a metronome and threw it all together in the end. Like, holy shit, dude. This body is haunted, the soul which possesses, seeks in and seeks out for the outer one second. The second before will see quite as relentless, the knocking and rapping of beam on my door. Caused such a sudden resume. All right, when the vocals come in, they're completely buried. Honestly, I'm not a fan of the tones on pretty much anything here. But the bigger problem is the performance. Like, until you guys are tight enough to actually play the fucking song, like, the mix doesn't really matter. The tones don't really matter. Like, get your playing tighter. Use a fucking click track. Practice to that click track. Like, it it literally sounds like, even if, even if you weren't using a click track, even if you just wanted to record, if you wanted to record that more, you know, natural feel without the click track, fine, whatever. But then you start with a single track, you know, you track like just the guitars for a scratch track and the vocals along to the guitars for a scratch track. So everybody has something to play along to. Then you track the drums playing along to that guitar track. Then you track the bass playing along to the drums and the guitar track. Like at the very least, each layer has to be playing along to the previous layer. It really sounds like you guys recorded your parts completely separately, not to a metronome, like, Sounds like you weren't even listening to the other performances when you tracked your part. The tones and the mix are one thing, the arrangement is one thing, but like, dude, the performance, without a good performance, it doesn't matter. Like, you could work with an A-list producer in a million dollar facility with tons of great sounding, expensive outboard gear, and it would sonically sound fantastic, but if you have a crap performance, it doesn't matter at all how good the overall sonic quality is. Whereas if you have a really, really good performance, you can have kind of a shitty sound and it can still be awesome. Like look at any punk band from like the 70s. The sonic quality is absolute fucking garbage, but the performance is incredible and that's what does it. Like if you don't, if you don't have a good performance, it doesn't matter how good it is sonically. If you have a really good performance, it can be not so great sonically and people will still love it. 